The following is the community notification from the Aurora Police Department for sexually violent predators and sex persons required to re register as sex offenders. Sex Offender Legislative History The National Sex Offender Legislation consisted of the Jacob Wetterling Act, 1994, which requires all states to register sex offenders. Megan's Law of 1996 gave public access to the Sex Offender Registry. The Pam Lynchner Act of 1996 mandated lifetime registration for some offenders. It also established the National Registry. The Adam Walsh Child Safety Act of 2006 and updated in 2009 sets uniform standards within all states. The Colorado Sex Offender Legislation Persons convicted on or after 7-1 of 91 or released from the Department of Corrections for sexual offenses against a child. Convicted in Colorado or another state on or after 7-1 of 94 or released from the Department of Corrections for a sexual offense. Colorado law is broader than that of the federal laws. Registration is required for both adults and juveniles. Some convictions allow for the petition to discontinue registration after a specific time. The most serious offenses require lifetime registration. Basic registration requirements. First, must register at a designated frequency, either annually or quarterly. Two, must report changes of address within five business days. Third, must report changes in name within five business days. Note, mere designation as a sex offender does not limit where a person may live, work, or visit. Community notification in Colorado. Notification in Colorado occurs in two ways. One, passive and ongoing through the sex offender registration process. Two, active via community, community meetings for those sex offenders determined by the courts or parole board to be sexually violent predators, or SVPs. Facts and statistics about sex offending. Currently, there are approximately 18,100 registered sex offenders in Colorado. Approximately 65% of convicted sex offenders are placed on probation in Colorado. The rest go to the Department of Corrections, or DOC, and community corrections. Offenders may be caught for one type of an offense and be at high risk to commit another type. The crime of conviction is only one indicator of risk. Community responsibility. The community has vested interest in helping the offender be successfully managed in the community. Sex offenders have the same needs for housing and employment as other citizens. Harassment is a counterproductive to goals of the community management and may cause the offender to go underground. Any citizen who uses this information to harass, threaten, or intimidate will be subject to criminal prosecution. Sex Offender Characteristics Most sex offenders engage in crossover behavior. Many sex offenders have no criminal history. There is no typical sex offender, but all tend to be deceptive, manipulative, and secretive. 78 to 90 percent of sex offenses are committed by someone known to the victim. Sexual deviancy begins in mid to late adolescence. Sexual offenses are not impulsive. They are usually carefully planned. Most sex offenders are male. Sexually Violent Predators Criteria SVP 1. The person must be convicted as an adult on or after July 1st of 1999. 2. The crime occurred on or after July 1st of 1997 and consisted of sexual assault, unlawful sexual contact, sexual assault on a child. All include attempts, solicitations, and conspiracies. 3. The victim must be a stranger or a person who the offender cultivated a relationship 
primarily for the purpose of sexual victimization. Four, the offender is determined to be a risk to the community as a result of psychological testing, prior convictions, etc. SVP status is determined by courts or parole board or designated as a sexually violent predator from another state. Sexually violent predator, SVP. The legislature determined that sexually violent predators, SVPs, by definition, pose a higher risk to the community at large and therefore mandated that upon their release from the Department of Corrections, or DOC, the community must be notified. An SVP may be more likely to reoffend in the first year upon release from the Department of Corrections. Impact on victims of sex offenses. Victims exhibit many different responses, crying, angry, quiet, withdrawn. There are no normal responses. Sex assault by someone known to the victim creates more difficult recovery. Victims often develop post-traumatic stress disorder. Long-term effects include depression, anxiety, eating disorders, flashbacks, divorce, loss of sexual interest, loss of concentration, sleeping disorders, and suicide. Male victims tend to develop antisocial behaviors, while female victims tend to develop depression. Responses are minimized when victims are believed and supported. Containment approach. The criminal justice supervision for the sexual offender. While under the supervision of the criminal justice system, they are required to submit to polygraph examinations, also required to attend sex offender treatment specific treatment. Additionally, community members can help in the containment of sex offenders by reporting to law enforcement any concerns. Sex offender management. Most sex offenders in Colorado are supervised by the criminal justice system in the community. Probation officers and parole officers set conditions, monitor behavior, and impose sanctions. Sex offenders must waive confidentiality for treatment and case management purposes. Secrecy undermines the rehabilitation and threatens the public safety. Sex offenders must be completely accountable for their behavior and must agree to intensive and intrusive measures. What if the offender moves? If the offender moves from his or her current address, we will notify the community. Community protection and safety issues. SVPs do not represent all dangerous sex offenders. The community notification process and sex offender registration are not a complete deterrent to sexual assault. Please remember, vigilantism, harassment, threats, or intimidation of the offender is counterproductive to the best interest and safety of the community. We want them to be registered and visible in the community and not underground. Such activity is criminal and will be investigated and the actor will be subject to prosecution. The Aurora Police Department has a new sexually violent predator. His name is Vincent McKinnon. Date of birth is 9-27-1963. He's a black male, approximately six foot, 287 pounds, black hair, and brown eyes. His address is 370 South Troy Street. McKinnon must register with Aurora Police Department, Sex Crimes Unit, quarterly, lifetime. His residence must be verified quarterly by the Sex Crimes Unit. A brief history for McKinnon. In December of 2016, he was discharged from the Department of Corrections, currently living at 370 South Troy Street. January 15th, 2004, he was convicted in Arapahoe County, case number 2001-CR-1022 for sex assault on a child, an F4, 
also for sex assault on a child, position of trust, F4. On April 1, 2016, he was determined by the court to be a sexual violent predator. McKinnon is currently not on probation or parole in Colorado. McKinnon was determined to be a sexual violent predator because McKinnon was approximately 32 years old at the time of the first incident. McKinnon was convicted on January 15, 2004. The conviction was for sexual assault on a child. The victim was known to McKinnon. McKinnon was determined by the court to be a sexual violent predator on April 1, 2016. Schools within one mile of 370 South Troy Street, Virginia Court Elementary School, Wheeling Elementary School, Lynn Knoll Elementary School, Aurora Hills Middle School, South Middle School, Gateway High School, Lotus School for Excellence, Parks and Trails within one mile of 370 South Troy Street, Aurora Hills Golf Course, Highland Park, Bicentennial Park, Virginia Court Park, Wheeling Park, and Expo Park. Recreation centers within one mile of 370 South Troy Street, Expo Recreation Center. Bus routes within one mile of 370 South Troy Street, Route 3, 3L, 105, and 121. If McKinnon moves, we will notify the community.